Everybody, it's Tyler here at Score Signature Event, checking in 20605A First Class, who's had a great season so far, Triple Crown already earlier this year, and some great other awards to go with this, and congratulations on that. They're uh, doing really well, so we're here day two of Score, currently ranked second, and we can't wait to see what they continue to do. This robot is all about quality and reliability. A lot of great things that go into this, so make sure you do pay attention as they go through on this robot here. Uh, just so many things it's built so well. Um, we'll be talking about uh, the Gold Rush Mac, their intake, uh, some of the different uh, odometry and different programs on this and like I said just overall great quality as we type so we tend to uh, zoom a bit more in we'll take a look at that so let's learn more about this team here on Pips and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grill Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit recf.org and get connected. Alex, we're going to break down this robot a bit more, starting with your uh, intake overall. This is such great build quality. Walk me through it. Sure. So. What we really prioritize on our robot is quality over quantity. So a lot of our intake, as you can see, is double chained. So we have our, for our first intake roller, we have it double chained here. And we have double chains going down to our, well, we have one chain going to our counter roller. We have a double chain to our gear boxes that correctly gear our speed to our counter roller. And we also have our intake that is zip tied because in previous competitions, we've seen that we've had issues with chains breaking. So we really wanted to make sure that this intake would not break in any of our matches so we could always be a reliable teammate and we wouldn't have to like worry about anything happening to us in a match. And we were talking earlier like you guys have not broken down yet in all the competitions you've been to right? No so, we haven't yet. Really cool on that. Uh, as you look uh, you know from that quality standpoint looking maybe in the future competitions any big changes you're looking at making or are you just overall very happy with what you have? Um, right now we're pretty happy with it. Overall the robot only pulls five watts on the intake which for the amount of chain, you would think we would have maybe seven or eight watts, sure. but only, it's not bad. Going in the future, I do wish this intake would be a bit further out because sometimes they, it does launch rings a bit more than we would like, but it is reliable. So, I mean, I can't complain with the reliability. Part of that reliability is uh, catting up your robot ahead of time and so you know how to build that. So Dave's talked to me about what you're doing for CAD and then we got a lot of other great aspects to talk about on here. Yes, yeah, so we use uh, Fusion 360 to CAD. Um, a big part of it is just making sure everything fits right. Um, we, it took us about six hours to use our, or to CAD our odometry pods. We are only 28 holes wide, which is very tough to build on this year. There's a lot of stuff that has to go on your robot. Um, but having this odometry has allowed us to have more consistent codes. If the field tiles are newer, the odometry accounts for that. and. We, we're never having to worry about if our robot's going to go over the line or to the wrong coordinate and mess up our opponent or our alliance all time. Um, just, and then spacing with everything has just been a big issue because we're so small. Um, catting has allowed us to get millimeters of clearance where we need it and has allowed everything to work flawlessly. So what advice do you maybe have for teams who aren't catting right now? Is it, do you think it's a must do or like what, what would you give it like a team who's never done anything with CAD before? Uh, I think CAD is very useful. It takes a minute to get used to it, but once you learn it, it's a very good tool because you can use it in your notebook. You can use it to look back on things that didn't work so you don't make those mistakes in the future. And then uh, you mentioned before with the odometry pods, uh, this is something your team started working with a bit ago as well too. Any uh, words of wisdom uh, from you utilizing odometry for other teams? Uh, just make sure that the pods that you build are frictionless. The rotation sensors have a lot of friction on them on, on their selves. So just keep the friction of the actual wheels themselves down and it'll make your tracking very, very smooth. And uh, Eldrin, talking about something in a ton as well to you, you guys have a great Gold Rush mech on there. So walk me through uh, how that's working in the match uh, as you go to it. And you know, do you have any uh, complications with that or has it just been working great for you? Sure, so our Steeler is something we implemented maybe a month ago. And when we were watching SIGs, we realized hey, that third goal control is really, really important. Not only for autonomous, you can get an extra top ring, but also for match play, you know, having that third goal is a win condition in matches. So we decided to build a, a goal rush mech that we only use in auto, and what it does, it'll rush the middle goal during auto and hopefully get control of it. We should be able to put a top ring on it during our autonomous code, and then that means, you know, going right into match play immediately after auto, we are, we are safe from 
we're not really safe, but we do have third goal control. So we have an advantage over our opponents. We can let them play into our hands. So we can play our strategy a bit more. Fib is talking to me a little bit more about your match strategy, especially as you go on the tele off. How does that translate from auto? And then how are you approaching matches like here? Has it changed at all at score versus, versus maybe when you're at Haunted or any other year events? Uh, Haunted was a lot more of controlling your positive corner as it was the 15 second roll versus the now 30 seconds. Um, but having that third goal off when you start driver control is key because you can play those choke points, get have your alliance just free from any stress, having them fill up a goal, just keeping the stress down for everybody and just knowing that if something goes wrong, you have that third goal to fall back on. We were talking earlier too, uh, we were talking about your Lady Brown a little bit and you're running uh, a motor config that we're not seeing as much uh, on other teams these days, so talk to me more about that. So yes, we are still using the two 5.5 watts and this just ensures that we have the same amount of power going to each of the arms. If you have just one shaft going, you can lose torque throughout the shaft. So one big thing we always preach on is consistency and reliability. If you can't score on the wall stakes in your matches, then you're not much of a help to your alliance. So if we have the same amount of power going to each of the arms and we have the extra motor, if one fails, we can always fall back on that extra motor. Well, first class having a first class performance so far here at SCORE, so we can't wait to see how you do throughout the rest of the event. Good luck here and thanks for giving us a great walkthrough of your robot and wish you best of luck, of course, throughout the rest of the high stakes season. Thanks a lot. Thank you. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected.